Scripps News, uh, Maya Rodriguez is live for us in Washington, D.C. with the latest. And Maya, the president just appointed an interim leader for NASA. You have a little more, more information on that. What can you tell us? Andrew, President Trump is appointing Sean Duffy, the current transportation secretary, to be NASA's interim leader. The agency has been without an administrator since Bill Nelson, who was the NASA administrator under President Biden, stepped down when the Trump administration came into office. President Trump had originally nominated Jarek Isaacman, the billionaire space adventurer. He participated in the first private commercial spacewalk last year. But Trump withdrew his nomination after he claimed Isaacman donated to Democratic candidates and had close personal ties with Elon Musk, something Isaacman disputed just a few days ago. In the meantime, NASA is preparing to send a new crew up to the International Space Station on a SpaceX rocket. That launch is set for either late July or early August, depending on weather. It will include two American astronauts, one astronaut from Japan's space agency and a Russian cosmonaut. What's interesting about that is this month marks 50 years since the launch of the Apollo Soyuz test project. Both the Apollo and Soyuz capsules launched on July 15, 1975, and their crews docked together in space. It was the first ever space mission where the U.S. and what was then the Soviet Union worked together. During a news conference within the last hour, NASA astronaut Mike Fink spoke about watching that mission launch on TV when he was a kid. Fink is part of that new crew that's going to be heading to the space station, and he had this to say about the legacy of that historic mission 50 years ago. It made a really huge impression on me to see some you know, people from Soviet Union, which you know, at the time we were not very good friends with in the middle of the Cold War, and, and then you know, these uh, brave American astronauts. It's a really good memory, but it made a big impression, not just on me, but the, the rest of the world, that if Soviet Union and the United States can, can uh, work together in space, then maybe we can work together here on Earth, too. In the meantime, NASA's budget is facing significant cuts under President Trump's 2026 budget. That includes a 25% budget cut, that's $6 billion, as well as layoffs that could potentially total 5,000 people. Some are raising alarms about that because 2,000 of those would include senior staff at the space agency. There are concerns the cuts could impact upcoming missions like the return of American astronauts to the moon or any potential future missions to Mars. Andrew. Emma, you mentioned uh, Elon Musk, who is very publicly had a falling out with the president, but he did say something interesting when it comes to specifically the space station recently, that essentially it's too dangerous for it to stay in orbit. What do we know about the overall health of the space station right now? Yeah, you know, Musk told NASA that it should bring the space station out of orbit within the next two years. This fall is going to mark 25 years of a constant human presence on the space station, and it is now starting to show its age, frankly. There have been leaks that have needed repair, and there is just general wear and tear after being in orbit for 25 years. Andrew. All right, Scripps News Global Affairs correspondent Maya Rodriguez for us. Maya, thank you.